with you. Let us worship God. and forgiveness though we have rebelled against him neither have we obeyed the voice of the Lord our God to walk in his law which he says for us Jesus says whoever will come after me let him deny himself and take all his cross and follow me. As we have approached our holy God, we realize that we have seen and come shout of his glory. People of God, let us therefore humbly confess our sins to him, kneeling and saying together, O God, our righteous judge and merciful Father, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, work, and deed, we acknowledge that we are responsible for our sinfulness. Have mercy upon us, we pray you. And forgive us by the love which you have shown towards us in Jesus Christ, who for our sake died and rose again. Give us true repentance by the power of your Holy Spirit. Enable us to forsake our evil way and serve you in the next of life. We heart this through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, Amen. pardon and deliver you from all your sins, Amen. confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, Amen. and keep you in life eternal, Amen. through Jesus Christ our Lord. Uh, recognizing that God has forgiven us because Jesus the Lamb of God has died for us let us adore him saying salvation belongs to our God who sits upon the throne and to the Lamb blessings and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. You have dealt well with your servant, O Lord. According to your word. Blessed are you, O Lord. O teach us your statutes. Your word is a lamp to our feet. And a light to our path. The appointed psalm for this service is Psalm 33. Psalm 33. Verse 6, 12 to 21 shall be taken in alternate order. Psalm 33. The Lord looked down from heaven 
and survey all the children of men. He considered from his dwelling place all the inhabitants of the earth. A king is not saved by a mighty army, nor is a warrior delivered by much strength. For the eyes of the Lord is on those that fear him, on those that trust in his unfailing love. We have waited the galley for the Lord, for he is our help and our shield. Together, let your merciful kindness be upon us. O oh Lord, even as our hope is in you. The Old Testament lesson is taken from the book of Prophet Isaiah, chapter 53. Isaiah 53. Who had believed our report, and to whom is the harm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of a dry ground. He had no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows, and unacquainted with grief. And we eat as it were our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he had borne our griefs and carry our sorrows, yet we did esteem him striking, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray, we have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted. Yet he opened out his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before a shearers is dumb. So he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgressions of my people was he stricken, and he made his grief with the wicked, and with the rich in his death, because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him, he had put him to grief, when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days, and the player of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. This is the word of the Lord.
please be seated. The second lesson for this service is written in the first John chapter 3, beginning from the first verse. First John chapter 3, from verse 1. Behold, what manner of love the Father had bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear that we shall be. But we know that when it shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that had his hope in him purified himself, even as he is pure. Whosoever committed sin transgressed also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. And ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins. And in him is no sin. Whosoever abideth in him and sinneth not, whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither known him. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. He that committed sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifest, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin, because he is born of God. In this the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. This is the word of the Lord. today. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your mercy over our lives. Thank you for your grace that sustains us today. Thank you for all that you have passed through for our life. Accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, as we go into your word, we pray, Father, you speak to us. Through your word, transform our life for better in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we'll pray. Please be seated. I want to thank my Lord Bishop for this opportunity to stand before the people of God this morning. It is my prayer that the Lord will continue to renew your strength on a daily basis in the name of Jesus God. Brethren, today we are considering this topic Jesus, man of sorrows. Jesus, man of sorrows. And our text is 
taken from Isaiah chapter 53, verses 3 to 5. He is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we did not esteem him. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteem him striking, smiting by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. Praise the Lord. This chapter talks about the Messiah, Jesus, who will suffer for the sins of all people. Such a prophecy is astounding. Who will believe that God will choose to save the world through a humble, suffering servant rather than a glorious king? The idea is contrary to human pride and ways. But God often works in ways we don't expect. The Messiah's strength is shown by humility, suffering, and mercy. There was nothing beautiful or majestic in the physical appearance of this servant. Israel who miscalculates the servant's importance. They will consider him an ordinary man. But even though Jesus will not attract a large following base on his physical appearance, he will bring salvation and healing. Many did not recognize the importance of Jesus' life and work. And they need faithful Christians to point out his extraordinary nature. The man of sorrows was despised and rejected by those around him. And he is still despised and rejected by many today. Some reject Christ by standing against him. Others despise Christ and his great gift of forgiveness. The reason Jesus is referred to as a man of sorrow is because all the sorrows he experienced during his time on earth. He made the initial sacrifice to leave heaven and come to earth as a human man. Throughout his life, Jesus endured all of these sorrows and struggles that accompany human life. Indeed, he was a man of sorrows, but his worst suffering was when he was crucified and paid the price for the sins of all mankind, bearing the weight of God's wrath and experiencing the full sorrow of the way sin damages our relationship with God. Yet, in spite of all the sorrows Jesus endured, he was still ultimately able to persist with the hope of God. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2 describes Jesus as the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Jesus had the hope of making a way for people to be redeemed and brought into God's family. John 3, 16. Dear people of God, as our Savior Jesus Christ endured sorrows, we are to count the sorrows that we face as joy because we have the hope of ultimate redemption through Jesus Christ. Count it all joy, my brothers and sisters, when you meet trials of various kinds, for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness, and let steadfastness have its full effect that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. James chapter 1, verses 2 to 4. Another circumstance that drew a shadow of gloom and melancholy over our Savior's life was his clear view and constant anticipation of the dreadful agonies 
in which it was to terminate. Every night, when he lay down to rest, the scourge, the crown of thorns, and the cross were present to his mind. On this dreadful object, he, he every morning, opened his eyes, and every morning saw them nearer than before. But I have a baptism to undergo, and how distressed I am until it is completed. Luke chapter 12, verse 50. In John chapter 1, verse 10, he was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. It is pathetic when you are fighting for someone, and the, and the very person you are fighting for now waging war against you. Such person will feel bad. Jesus took upon himself our punishment. Our punishment that we deserve. Yet, we did not appreciate him. The situation of our society right now, as we can see, do not give him joy, but sorrow. When Jesus was about to finish his ministry on earth, Luke chapter 20 verse 41 to 42 says, Now, as he drew near Jerusalem, he saw the city and wept over it, saying, If you had known, even you especially, in this your day, the things that make for your peace, but now they are hidden from your eyes. The Jewish leader rejected Jesus as the Messiah. They refused God's offer of salvation in Christ Jesus. Very similar to our generation today, all have gone astray. No one cares about God. All we care is money, wealth, fame, pleasure of this world. How can God be happy with this situation? In Genesis chapter 6, God prepared an ark to save people from impending destruction. Noah built the ark for over 100 years, but only Noah and his family with the animals that were saved. People then rejected the offer of salvation. Look at the effort put in to build the heart and the work of evangelism of Noah, calling people to enter the heart, but they ignore the call. What happens today? We are causing him more sorrow. You are in the best position to fulfill the mandate of God. But as president, as governor, as pastors, we have failed. We ignore him. We desire to please Satan than God. A true father cannot be happy when his son is going astray. How much more our God? Our society is full of evil. Many sons and daughters of God are not in good relationship with God because they have allowed the love of this world on their hearts. First John chapter 2 verse 15. Therefore, for you and I to make God happy, stay away from sin. Desire to do his will, not your will. Jesus did not allow flesh to take, to take over his life in the garden of Gethsemane, but he said, let your will be done. As you go out this way, say this, let your will be done. Not my will. With the grace of God, you will not fulfill the flesh desire, but you will make him happy. Finally, when mother is in labor, she goes through a lot of pain that mouth cannot explain. But after delivery, joy will follow. Jesus Christ has given us life. He has passed through a lot of pain that we cannot explain. Indeed, He has done so much for us. He has taken away our sorrow. What next? Let us make Him happy by telling the world what He has done for us. He has done so much for me. He has taken away my sorrow. 
Oh glory, hallelujah. He's coming to take me home. Oh, he has done so much for me. He has taken away my sorrow. Oh glory, hallelujah. He's coming to take me Father, we thank you for your word that we have heard. We pray, Father, every day of our life, help us to fulfill your mandate. Help us to do your way. Help us to stay away from sin. Help us to focus on what you have designed for our lives in the name of God the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. response to the word of God we are going to reform our faith in the words of the Apostles Creed I believe in God the Father Almighty creator of heaven and earth and in Jesus Christ his only son our Lord he was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary he suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified dead and buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and he seated at the right hand of the Father. We come again to join the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Lord's prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. And forgive us our sins. As we forgive those who sin against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show your mercy upon us. O Lord, guide and defend our rulers. And deal your ministers with righteousness. O Lord, save your people. Give peace in our time, O Lord. O oh God, make clear hearts within us. Call it for the second week in Lent.
prayer for these seasons and other prayers. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Eternal God, whose glory it is always to have mercy, be gracious to all who have gone astray from your ways and bring them again with penitent hearts and steadfast faith to embrace and hold fast the unchangeable truth of your word. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Almighty and merciful God, you hate nothing that you have made and forgive the sins of all those who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts that lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, we may receive from you the God of all mercy, perfect forgiveness and peace through Jesus Christ our Lord. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, the knowledge of stars and eternal life, who service his perfect freedom, defend us, your humble servant, in all assault of our enemies, that we surely trust in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, Almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with Almighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by your governance to do always what is righteous in your sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Almighty God, we have called your church out of all nations hear us as we pray for the old church of God of which are your part visit the company of your people with your grace O God and fill us with the confidence that comes from your presence that in all things we may set the light of your compassion before people grant that no one who is hungry may go without food at all hands nor who is naked without clothing, nor who is bereaved without comfort, nor who is oppressed without justice, nor who is worse in darkness, apart from you without the kindly light of your gospel. Let us never, O oh God, disgrace the name by which we have called. In particular, we pray for those who you have called to hold office in your church, for all ministers of your word in sacraments for all men who before you lead your people in the ways of truth spare us from futility and vanity from laziness and self-seeking and grant that those who lead may lead in the paths of Christ that his name and your may be glorified before men in particular we pray for our primates Henry our bishop Bamishebi our Bishop Babatunde and those who with them have been sent to lead your church grant unto them all a full measure of your grace and unto us a willingness to do more than is our share that all who walk among us may know that you are the body of Christ whose covenant has made us bold to come before you through Jesus Christ our Lord Almighty God the ruler of all nations of the world. Look with favor, we pray, upon all who hold authority in this every land. Especially, we pray for Muhammadu, our president, Yemi, his vice, and Dapo, our governor in Ogun State. Enable them to govern justly all those over who they are set. Establish your kingdom of righteousness across bounds of the nations. And bring in your reign of peace under Jesus Christ, our King ahead through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us continue in our prayers as we thank God for another way that God has granted unto us. Let's appreciate God for His grace upon our lives. Let's appreciate God for the second week in this year lengthening period that the grace of God will abound for us even to finish well in this period. 
let us also pray that God will grant us the grace to do his will every time as we heard in the word of God today that Jesus is the man of sorrow but determined to fulfill the will of his father and let us pray to God that God give us the grace to fulfill your will let us bring our personal request unto God believing that God is going to answer our prayers Lord in your mercy Almighty God you have given us grace to bring before you with one accord our common supplications and you promise that when two or three are gathered together in your name you will grant their request fulfill now O Lord the desires and petitions of your servants as may be most expedient for them granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the world to come the fullness of eternal life let us say the grace together the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god and the fellowship of the holy spirit be with us all evermore amen of all good things who loves the cheerful giver we beseech you to re receive and bless these our offerings which we are present to you and we then bless our lives souls, body and spirit make us a living sacrifice this week acceptable unto you bless all those who are in agreement and covenant with you and open the windows of heaven to bless us. Accept us and accept our offering. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Please kneel as we pray. We beseech you, O oh Lord, as we go into this week, to guide us through the darkness of the world. To guard us from its perils. To hold us up and stand in us. When we grow weary in our mortal way. And to lead us by your chosen path. May we never leave your presence this week. In the name of Jesus. Amen. May we never fall into the hands of the wicked. In the name of Jesus. May we never make journeys of no return in the name of Jesus. Amen. But Lord, in all things this week, may your eyes watch over us. Amen. May your strength be our strength. Amen. May your provisions supply all our needs. Amen. May we not beg for bread in the name of Jesus. Amen. And as the mothers of these dances gather for the Mother's Union Conference this week, come into their midst in the name of Jesus. Speak your joy to their homes in the name of Jesus. And let the fellowship of mothers be everlasting and be renewed in family life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God. And of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The blessings of God Almighty. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Second 
Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Christ in you. Christ in me. Christ in us. May the blessings of the Lord be upon you. Have a wonderful week.